How much of what's been written about you can be trusted? There are a couple of books. There's... Well, I've noticed that you always say, you look at your notes and you say, to the interviewee. Yes. Uh, it was once, uh, someone said about you once that this and that and the other thing, and, and it's, uh, I, I always wondered why, why you did that. <laughs> Uh, looked at them or said it? Yeah, said it. Well, if I look at them and say nothing, the show becomes so quiet that nobody can <laughs> actually hear. You mean? But I mean, I, I think that the, the press is a poor, very poor reference for um, uh, oh, I knowing see. somebody. Hmm. I don't think that you. I don't know what to say about that. Yeah. Well, there are two books in print purporting to tell the story of your life, your rages, your excesses, your lusts, your dreams. I think that I'm almost quoting from the cover of one of them. Um, can we trust those? And if not, how do they get away with it? I don't think it's worth going into. I mean, I from their feel, part or mine. <laughs> no, well, news, news, of course, is big business. And uh, there are news items that are worth $100. There are some that are worth several thousand dollars. Some news items are worth a hundred thousand dollars, and some are two-dollar items. But uh, news is business, and uh, people sell news. And uh, unfortunately, people in my position, uh, people in the public eye, are sellable commodities. But they're not any different than Kleenex or Dial soap or anything else. And uh, so if we, you know, find something out that's about your sex life or something that you do with your fingernails after you cut them off, or, or Who if, told you, you, if you smoke the grime from your navel, then that's, that's, that's big news. That's important. He's Dick Gallagher. Smokes the grime from his navel and he saves his fingernail pairings. I'd rather you hadn't mentioned that about me. I, I revealed that to you in private. And then <laughs> I thought I could trust you. <laughs> but anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because finally, you know, and I found that people really don't uh, believe all the nonsense they read. And they look at you when they meet you and wonder if it's true. Mm -hmm. But they finally make a decision on what their experience with you personally is. If so, it's for five minutes or, you know, if you say thank you to the hostess and she brings you a cup of coffee, uh, and uh, well, then she thinks you're a courteous person. Mm -hmm. If you're tired and cranky and you've, uh, you're, you're ill or something and you don't want to be disturbed or sign autographs and things like that, then they say, well, he's a kind of a funny person. But, so uh, whether or not you through horse manure out of the top window of your old place on 52nd Street when you were young and yelled to watch out for the flying red horse, um, <laughs> which is, just, I'm just picking one at random that they always seem to write about you, um, is irrelevant. Uh, when people are watching you on the screen, I, I don't know whether they wonder if those things, but I always wonder, if, if those aren't true, then where do they come from? Well, but I think you... And did you? <laughs> <laughs> I think that I think that that's a kind of a question that, well, th there's a perfect example. Yeah. On your show, you have money items as well. You have items that you sell to the audience and items that were entertaining or uh, uh, they offer some sort of uh, sparkling interlude um, for what otherwise might be a sea of dullness. A dullness. Yeah, I mean, if you have if you have a guest that's that's, that's very boring, and you you um, you ask them some question like that, that well, I, I'm getting far afield. I think that it that you have to think uh, about your ratings when you're giving the show, when you're doing the show, and you have to make the show as interesting as possible. And to the question of whether or not I throw manure out of or, what was it? Uh, fourth story window of a house on 52nd oh, yeah. Street. 
I threw manure out of some window is uh, uh, it's sort of provocative. I mean, people would rather listen to that than listen to the fact that uh, yesterday the, uh, the Supreme Court refused to uh, hear the uh, uh, Pyramid Lake water right issue. I mean, that's, that's a part of the sea of dullness. Yeah. People don't want to hear that. They want to know, they want to hear me describe how I might have put the... <laughs> I can only tell you that I was on 52nd Street the other day and they haven't cleaned it up yet, so I'm <laughs>